I said to Kenny Mason, it's so lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. Thank you so much for agreeing to chat to me today. Um, so we're, you're coming to Glasgow next week to play a Beethoven's third piano concerto. and We're really looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, I'm really excited. And it's just so amazing to be playing a concerto during this time. So I'm really looking forward to, to playing with you for the first time as well. Yeah, have you been to Glasgow before? I haven't actually, no. No, I'm really excited. I've been to Edinburgh, but I haven't been to well, we're under, we're under lockdown just now for until the 11th of December, so I, I was going to say you'll get an incredibly warm welcome from the great people of Glasgow. <laughs> you will still get a very warm welcome, but there's just not so many people about at the moment. That's fine, that's fine. I'm sure it will still be lovely to, to see the city as well. Yeah, well, we're a very friendly orchestra to say everybody's really looking forward to seeing you. So you know the Beethoven well, don't you? Yeah, well, it's one of my favourite concertos, and um, I've been playing it for some time, and I always love coming back to it. Um, it's just such a great piece. It's so well orchestrated and so well written. And there's, I discover something new every single time. Yeah, and I always, I'm, I'm a bit obsessed with C minor for some reason. I just love C minor. I think it's just such a, you know, you, you read stuff about, we, we played Schumann's Second Symphony last week, which is in C major, but the slow, the adagio is in C minor. And I just think it's so rich and beautiful and, you know, uh, just really, really moving actually. Yeah, it's a beautiful key and also the fact that he puts the second movement in E major is also mm. especially, especially beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Now, when I was reading about you this morning, um, I saw that you were supposed to play at the Alba Hall, weren't you, in Beethoven's Third Piano Concerto? And of course, because of lockdown and COVID, you, that was, uh, you weren't able to do that. But I saw you playing the concerto with your family. Yeah, so the cancelled Albert Hall was actually probably one of the biggest blows for me because I was really looking forward to that concert. And it was one of the first ones to get cancelled as well back in April. So that was really sad. And I thought, well, I still really want to play this piece and do something. And mm. luckily, um, my siblings are string players. So we kind of did a string quartet with second piano kind of arrangement and played the first movements and kind of um, live streamed it and put it on YouTube. So that was really lovely. It was a really good consolation to still get to perform it and uh, really nice to perform it in a chamber music setting as well. Yeah, it was really intimate. I mean, it, technology is fabulous. I know we all moan about it, but I mean, it, it is really clever, isn't it? So, so you can do things like that. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And you know, I think we're definitely relying on that a lot at the moment. And it's been really amazing to still have that even when you can't do things live. Yeah. Um, but you did get to do a prom. You did get to do a prom for BBC Four, didn't you? Um, with, your, with, with, with your brother, um, Sheku. Yes, and that actually was a new thing. So that only came about as a result of lockdown um, because the proms, they don't really do chamber concerts or recitals because the Albert Hall is just too big so it just wouldn't work but because this was a virtual no audience prom and therefore they can do whatever they like with the sound um, this came about and yeah we played some some lovely cello and piano sonatas the Rachmaninoff and the fourth Beethoven and some Barber and it was just a really special experience because I knew that that's not the kind of thing that could happen at the proms otherwise. Yeah yeah, I love Barbara, I have to say, I'm a big fan. And you do chamber music and concertos, don't you? That's, you, you do a nice mix of that. Yeah, I think it's really, really important to do a mix. And I mean, chamber music is my favourite of all of them because it's playing with other people and it's just, you feed off each other's energy. And I just think, yeah, a, a career without chamber music would, would be unimaginable for me. Yeah, yeah. And you, you obviously all get on so well as a family. Do you play chamber music with all members of your family? Um, kind of, yes. I mean, we're all different ages and different stages. Sometimes we play together for fun as all seven of us and we play together in different combinations. So the younger ones have a trio and the older ones have a trio. And then we also play with friends and other musicians as well. Mm. I was also reading about your love of Clara Schumann. Um, and you, that was your first album, wasn't it? Your first record that you brought out was, was a music of Clara Schumann. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, about a year and a half ago now. And that was really lovely to do because I really love her music and there was so much to discover, especially the piano concerto. So I loved doing that. Mm. Did you, I, I think I read somewhere that you described her as a pioneer of uh, was it women composers and um, women artists. Well, I mean, I think she was just, she definitely stands out in the romantic era. There weren't well, I'm sure there were female composers around, but of the ones that we know now, she's definitely the one that has lasted. And, you know, she, she 
wrote so many great things and so I think she's definitely worth getting to know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I was When I was reading about the piano concerto, just going back to the Beethoven third piano concerto, I was reading that, um, that there's that wonderful quote from the page turner, because Beethoven premiered the piece. And though I thought there were two really interesting quotes about it. One was the fact that the page turner said that lots of the pages had no writing on them at all, because it was all in Beethoven's head and he hadn't had time to write it down. But the other thing that I found fascinating was that there was just, um, it was just at the time when the piano was extending its range, because the, the normal piano was five octaves, but um, they were just beginning to make pianos that had more notes than that, basically. Um, and Beethoven utilizes that, doesn't he, in this piece? Yeah, I didn't know the thing about the five octaves piano, actually. I knew the first thing about not having much music because I heard he was always really last minute and he would kind of improvise a lot in his concerts. And I think it was a nightmare for his page turners. So I found that really fascinating. But I didn't know that about the piano expanding at that exact time. But I definitely noticed in the piece that there's a wide range, um, you know, of, of octaves and mm -hmm. he really uses everything that he can in that piece. Yeah, I hope I'm right. I hope I'm not talking nonsense. Oh, no, so, I'm, sure you are. I'm sure you are. I, 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 just, I just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. So, so what have you been doing? So um, you, you live in London, I take it? Yeah, I live in London. Uh, I'm currently in my flat now. And mm. I mean, my parents still live in Nottingham and I'll go back there for Christmas. But yeah, I'm just um, kind of weathering the lockdown and doing what I can. For example, I've got this, this concerto coming up, which is very exciting. Yeah. And um, apart from that, just preparing for future concerts, um, mm. which I um, have faith will happen. And, yeah. 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 I was reading also about you. Uh, you were um, an Elton John scholar at the Royal Academy, weren't you? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, Elton John, because he used to go to the Royal Academy, so he supports a few of the pupils there um, to kind of show his support of, of the building and of the place. And mm. so I, I just happened to, to be one of them. Yeah, but you also got to perform with him, didn't you? Oh, yeah, that was um, kind of when I was about 17. And I actually played the viola because he plays the piano and he, he, yeah. he um, had kind of a band with him. And so I played the viola in that. That was a really interesting experience, actually. It was nice to play non-classical music and see kind of the difference. Yeah, these music scholarships are so important, aren't they, to enable people to study because it's, it, it is simply so expensive and also with instruments and, you know, loans and things. It, it's, it's great that people like Elton John give money to students to study. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest roadblocks for all musicians, especially young musicians. And yeah, I think no one should be held back due to financial issues. So I think it's really amazing that there are people out there who support musicians so that they can study and because it, it, it can be very expensive pursuing music. And I think that shouldn't deter people. No, I absolutely agree with you. And I mean, I mean, I know I play the violin and, you know, the price of violins and bows and things, they're just astronomical and people, you know, with student, you know, paying to study and things. And of course, lots of musicians, you know, we go and study all over the world, don't we? And, and it's, uh, it's an incredibly expensive thing to do. And um, it's, it's just so awful when money stops people doing things. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And I, I think that's, something that many people I think feel passionately about and are doing what they can to change. And there's luckily loads of scholarships and help and support out there. But of course, more is always necessary. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so lovely to chat to you. I'm really looking forward to working with you. You're coming, you're coming, arriving in Glasgow on Wednesday, aren't you? So we look forward to seeing you then and the concert on Thursday. Yeah, I'm really excited as well. So I really look forward to playing with all of you. Yeah, it's a beautiful hall. No audience, I'm afraid, of course, but it's, it's, it's a really beautiful hall, um, 19th century, it's, um, uh, and it's, it's beautifully refurbished. So I hope you'll, in, you'll enjoy working with us next week. Oh, lovely. I can't wait. I can't wait. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for doing this. See you Wednesday. Yeah, see you Wednesday. Bye. Bye.